I've just seen you do fingerprint scanning and all sorts of stuff. Security's yeah. tight here, tell me about that. It is, so we have seven layers of security from the boundary uh, fence line all the way through to the IT in the rack. And what you've just experienced there is the access from what we term the general area of operations on the, what we term the fluffy side of the building to the secure side of the building, which is where the data halls and all of the IT infrastructure resides. So going through what we call this tube lock, circle lock contraption, you have to uh, go into the lock itself and uh, put your finger onto the finger vein reader. And the finger vein reader, um, rather than just a traditional fingerprint reader, actually searches for signs of life. So it has to make sure that uh, you haven't had your finger cut off and someone's brought you through. <laughs> so it's quite extreme. It does seem a bit over the top, um, but it does give the customers the assurance that it's very difficult to get into the facility and do anything untoward with their IT. Okay. Like the plan. okay, where are we going now? Though? We are going to go into the JISC shared data hall. So again, we've got further security access into here. lights will come on. Do you want to follow me through? So what you see here are various pods with IT racks within them and within the racks is all the IT infrastructure for each of the customers. So we have a number of the anchor customers from the Janet Consortium in here uh, such as UCL, King's College, the Francis Crick Institute, we also have Imperial College. I'll take you through some of the pods now. what's called high performance computing. So each of these racks are full with HPC platforms and on the other side is the storage that supports those platforms. So this is all utilized for medical research and it's a consortium of UCL, the Francis Crick uh, and the Sanger Institute. So they've, they've come together as a single entity if you like uh, through funding um, to provide this service and then take forward medical research within the building. Storage is 10 petabytes of data uh, and the, um, the, the, the IT load that, that's, that is supported by is some 190 kilowatts of power. This is the single largest installation of its type outside CERN. Right. So to give you some sort of context of the scale of it. So they're very proud of it. Yeah, sure. Well, so, so you've got, you've got pods, are they all sort of a similar size? Or? Um, it varies depending upon the requirement, but what we do have in this room is predominantly high performance computing doing research. So you've got uh, King's College over there doing something similar, but that's, that's their own infrastructure. You have the Sanger Institute in the far corner doing something similar as well. Uh, and then we have smaller customers, more traditional education organisations that have um, traditional business applications such as the London School of Economics who are doing their own you know, um, uh, teaching uh, learning um, applications and then their own IT functions for um, HR and finance and that sort of thing. So it's, all the, it's across the board really, it's traditional, um, traditional uh, IT capability along with the research side. So this is uh, the King's College installation. Similar format to what we've seen, but this is uh, slightly less powered. Um, and they do a number of, um, uh, they do a number of predominantly medical research on their own systems. Um, and they've migrated a lot of their infrastructure from their own campus in central London in the Strand. And one of the key benefits they've seen is that they're not being um, challenged by the, uh, the struggles of having this level of IT infrastructure in central London whereby um, there, was an out, there was a big, large power outage recently on Kingsway in London, which uh, meant that their data center went down. But by having their data center housed in a location outside central London, it allowed them to ke keep these platforms running and also their IT infrastructure running as well. We have Sanger Institute and Imperial College in this pod here. Um, again, they're doing medical research. This is the Med Bio, Med Bio project. It's on a smaller scale to the Sanger um, and UCL and um, Francis Crick installation. But again, this is very high-powered infrastructure. So the room itself is 500 square meters, and it's supported by 750 kilowatts of IT load, which is the, the kilowatts that support the room from powering the IT. And then you see those boxes on the wall there. Those are the computer room air conditioning units. They're attached to a pipework system with cold water that then creates cold air that pushes the cold air underneath the floor and then through those floor grills. And then that cold air is then circulated through the uh, IT infrastructure and out through the rear, and then circulated through the crack units again. But you're always maintaining a level of temperature within the pod to ensure that the IT operates correctly, and 24-7, 365. The electricity that supports the IT, you've got, in effect, this is a large wall socket. So um, it, that has a lot of power cables that come out the bottom of it, that then feed through underneath the floor, and then get attached into these power strips 
which the um, IT hardware then plug into. And you will notice that this one's blue. We call it a PDU, power distribution unit. And then the one over here, the one in the corner over there is red. And what that means is that each cabinet, each IT rack, has a power feed from the blue units and the red units to um, a socket under the floor for each, providing what we call an A plus B supply. So should there be, should there be any outage on that side, it means that the uh, red side will support the entire IT load for that rack and for that IT infrastructure. There's a very large primary substation at the rear of the building, which uh, we paid for, which costs a lot of money. And that is supported uh, by the, the power ring that runs around the whole of the Slough Trading Estate and connects into the Slough Heat and Power Power Station uh, and also the uh, National Grid as well. And there are two connections from that um, power ring that come into the primary substation at the rear of the building. And each of those can support um, up to 40 megawatts of electricity. Um, the idea being is that should one fail, then the other one can pick up the entire IT and calling load of the facility. Um, and then alongside that, we have a generation, uh, a, a set of generators, uh, which, is, which are called continuously rated generators, and they are the, the, the uh, engines that go in ships, um, and they can run uh, the building indefinitely, as long as we put fuel in them, to again provide all the IT power for all, all, all the IT technology, as well as calling all that infrastructure as well. So the, the building can run in isolation indefinitely, as long as we top up the, um, the, uh, the engines, if you like, the fuel tank. Diesel, yeah, lots of, lots of red diesel. <laughs> so this um, room is now um, pretty much at capacity and we have been uh, building an additional piece of capacity on the other side of that wall, which provides another 2,500 kilowatts of power. This is 750 kilowatts of power and uh, we're already moving new customers into that space. So uh, both UCL and Brunel are going in there and then Queen Mary will be going in there in the next month or so. Um, but we're very much at the beginning of this the data center development. So the building itself um, can support 16,000 kilowatts, and we've only built out an operational on 2.25, uh, sorry, 2,200 kilowatts with a further 2,500 kilowatts that have gone live. So we've got the ground floor and then the, this floor above us. So there's lots of capacity. A lot of them are doing um, standard enterprise applications for their email, for their um, HR, their finance systems, and for the learning so solutions that they provide to their students. But the high-powered solutions, the high-performance computing, computing is research. And that will be across various different um, avenues of research. Predominantly in the um, EMAD lab system that we just see here, that is um, medical research. And King's College focused heavily on medical research as well. Um, so they've been doing some quite interesting things, which we can talk about later on, but using these platforms to support it. But it's the, the, the high-powered computing allows them to do research quicker than a standard server, which is as simple to get through. <laughs> If they all want to use this powerful grid you've created, how do you prioritise? How is it decided who gets to use the power and when? There is a very important component in there. More than one network connection, and there's infinity bands and a control it's network. Accurate. It's really very comfortable. And then with this unit, I can walk around now in this room, and I'm suddenly in a virtual environment. It's an optical tracking system, so they're basically...